Welcome to Take Your Territory with Jamie Rohrbach. This is the podcast where I encourage you to go out and take your dream, receive your destiny from the Lord Jesus, the destiny that He planned for you before the foundation of the world. This is the territory that God has ordained for your life. It's a big dream that you have, and it can happen. Every good thing is waiting for you, and today we're going to talk about making that visible in your life. Stay tuned for today's episode. Hello and welcome to Take Your Territory with Jamie Rohrbach. I am Jamie Rohrbach. I'm so glad you're tuning in today. Stay tuned today for a message about holiness, about how to really obtain the blessings that God has promised. What does He require? What is covered by His grace? And to what degree do we have to perform our work or change or obey in order to receive from God? Stay tuned. This message will change your life. Hi, friend. I'm so glad you joined us today. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for loving Jesus with me enough to study the Word of God. Hey, let's pray before we get into this because I have a powerful message that I want to share with you. And I know I'm going to need Holy Spirit's help in order to get it across and for all of us to have our hearts open to receive. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, we just ask right now that you would speak your word through me, Father God, and that your word would run swiftly into my heart first, Father, but also that your word would run swiftly into the heart of every person. Father, I ask that you would pulverize our hearts, that you would purify us, God, that you would convict us, that you would inspire us, that you would let us feel your love, your presence, and your affection, God. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that you would give us a love for your son, Jesus, that we have never had before. Give us a sold out spirit of complete surrender to you, God. And let us just say, Father, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth and in my life as it is in heaven. Lord, let us each surrender fully to you because you are our Lord. We thank you, Lord. We give you the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, again, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Jamie Rohrbaugh, and I'm so glad that you have taken this moment to hear this prophetic message. Hey, I want to speak a word of exhortation to you. I believe and pray it'll be a word of prophetic exhortation where I can prophesy the word of the Lord over you. But it's also exhortation in the sense of saying, guys, this is important to the Lord. This is something that we need to do for him. This is an essential part of the Christian life a kind of exhortation that changes us and brings us again to the feet of Jesus in a greater level of surrender. I'm preaching today on the topic of God's promises are conditional. God's promises are conditional. And what does it take to receive those promises? The reason I want to talk about this is because I receive so many questions from people saying, I'm not doing this that God asked me to do, but I really want this blessing. Will God still bless me? And that is such a hard question because there's a very clear answer, but there's also a mercy and grace answer. And both are true. Let me explain what I mean. God's promises come with conditions. Let's read one of the very famous passages. And I'm going to read the whole thing out of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14. Now, this is a passage where God promises that he's going to set you on high. He's going to give you all the stuff. He's going to give you money. He's going to give you relationships and influence. It's all the great stuff that the flesh wants, that people even need to live victorious, successful lives in many ways. I'm going to read this to you, and you'll see how much this passage can make your spirit jump, because this is one example, just one example of the many, many, many blessings that God has for you. This passage is his will for you. Check it out. This is what God wants your life to look like. Deuteronomy chapter 28, starting at verse 1. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. 
The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. How many of you want land? Yes, God wants to give you land. Continuing at verse 9. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. Just think about that verse. It promises you children, even miracle babies, if you need a miracle. It promises you increase. It promises you financial prosperity and stability. It promises you physical land. Oh, God has so much for you, friend. Continuing at verse 12. The Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. Hey, does that strike a chord with you? Can you imagine you yourself are supposed to be a banker, a banker with so much money that entire countries are coming to you for a loan? Can you imagine that level of wealth and prosperity? You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today and are careful to observe them, so you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or the left to go after other gods to serve them. Wow, what a powerful passage. And Father, we receive that and we take that. If that word is for you, say, I take it right now. I take that. I take that. Speak that out of your mouth. Well, let's look at another powerful passage. Psalm chapter 91. I just want to get you conditioned, get your mindset on all these blessings that God has for you, okay? Psalm chapter 91. Very famous chapter. A chapter in which God promises blessing after blessing and mostly safety and protection, protection from harm, from danger, from sicknesses. Let's read it. Psalm chapter 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That is Psalm chapter 91, verses 1 through 16, the entire chapter. Friend, I read those two passages to you because I want you to see just a tiny picture from only two chapters of the Bible of the huge blessings that God has for you. The blood of Jesus purchased for you every good thing that God has. And of course, the most important thing is forgiveness of sins, salvation, and eternal life through Jesus Christ. That is the most important thing he could ever give us. But even after that, God's victory doesn't stop. He just keeps on saving us to the uttermost, saving us from sin, lack, sickness, and poverty because Jesus Christ paid the price for you to be healed, delivered, set free, and walking in power. Remember, Jesus said, 
that these signs shall follow those that believe. In my name, he said, you will cast out demons, you'll heal the sick, you'll speak in other tongues. And Jesus was saying, hey, go out and preach the gospel. Go out and preach and all of these powerful miracles are going to follow you. Jesus has so much for you. Do you long to know God better? When you mine the scriptures for the hidden treasure of his various names, you learn who he truly is. Through Jamie's painstaking work and study, this pocket-sized guide contains over 500 names of God found in the Bible. It's called Praying the Names of God, 555 Biblical Names of God, and How to Use Them in Prayer and Worship. Grab this powerful paperback or ebook today and take your prayer life and worship to a whole new level. Hey friend, are you believing God for your dream house? For a place that is safe and beautiful and secure. A place where you can raise your family, where you can live in peace and total shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. You know, Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 18 says this, My people will dwell in a peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, and in quiet resting places. Isn't that beautiful? If your heart yearns for a peaceful habitation, a secure dwelling, and a quiet resting place, then I have a brand new ebook for you. This ebook is called Your Prophetic House Encourage Your Heart and Build Your Supernatural Home. And this ebook is instantly downloadable. It is a printable PDF that you can get on my Gumroad store. And it has material in it about confessions to speak over your house, a prophetic word over your house, how to cleanse your house, a prayer for a paid for home on earth as it is in heaven and your mansion does not have a mortgage in heaven. (laughs) How and why to make a vision board for your house, 16 miracle scriptures to pray and take for yourself over your house and over any other miracle you need, and a brand new prayer about the furnishings of your house. Lord, fill my house with treasure because the Bible says that there is treasure in the dwelling place of the righteous. Hey, this ebook is only $10. It is going to be a big blessing to you. I'm already getting testimonies about how the Lord is using it to minister to people. Go to my Gumroad store, download it today. You'll be glad you did. Friend, this is the exhortation that I have for you today. God's promises are conditional. Even Malachi chapter 3, one of the famous passages in the Bible regarding your finances. Oh, it's a huge promise. This is what it says, starting at verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. That actually means very literally that his provision will overflow all of your need. And then God continues, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Again, another example of huge blessing. But my friend, this blessing, along with all the other blessings and promises in the Bible, comes with a condition. Those blessings come with a condition as well. All of God's blessings and promises contain an if. And if you, then I. If you will do this, then I will do that. That's what covenant is. It's two people upholding an end of an agreement. And the two people are you and God. And here's the thing. When you make Jesus the Lord of your life, that word Lord actually means not only that we are acknowledging that he is the Christ and we're believing on him for forgiveness of sins, but we actually have to make him Lord, boss, and master. Lord means we surrender to him. It means he's in charge now. It means whatever it is that he wants us to do, that's what we're going to do. It means no matter what he says, our response is to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I serve you willingly. Yes, Lord, I serve you gladly. Yes, Lord, I bow to you. That is what it means to actually make him Lord. And so when the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that means you actually have to make him and confess that he is your boss and your master. Each of us have that same requirement that if we are to be saved and our sins forgiven, if we're to receive eternal life in Christ and have Holy Spirit seal us for the future eternal life as a down payment of the eternal life God's going to manifest for us forever in heaven, then my friend, we have to actually make Jesus the 100% Lord, boss, and master without exception. 
Now we know that when we make him the Lord of our lives, that we become the righteousness of God in Christ. He changes who we are. The apostle Paul told us, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So you are a brand new person in Christ and you are forever new. You're new today. You're new tomorrow. You're new the day after that because God's mercies are new every day. And he looks at you and he sees Jesus. But you know what? If we willfully regard sin, if we willfully choose to sin, if we think, oh, I'm just going to do this and maybe hope God doesn't notice. If we think, ah, you know, I know God doesn't want me to do that, but I'm just going to do what I want to do. Then that is actually taking us to a place where Jesus is really not the Lord of our lives and our decisions expose that. Because the Bible says this, he says in Psalm chapter 66, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. And what does it mean to regard iniquity? Well, first, iniquity is the thing on the inside that is not like God, that produces the outward fruit of sin. But here's the thing. Jesus died for your iniquities to be totally removed from you. The Bible says that he was wounded for your transgressions and he was bruised for your iniquities. And God's word says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. That's why Jesus had to be bruised for your iniquity because bruising is actually the shedding of blood on the inside of your body. If someone hits you really hard and causes a bruise, it's because those capillaries and those blood vessels on the inside temporarily burst and the blood went out on the inside. And you might get a dark spot on your body wherever you are hit. That dark spot is blood that's been released under your skin and it takes time for that to go away. But you know what? Jesus was bruised on the inside so that his blood on the inside could wash the iniquities on the inside of you away. So that his blood shed inside himself could wash you clean on the inside. And his grace is so sufficient that he makes us clean with his blood. But you know what? If we regard iniquity in our hearts, the Lord will not hear. And that word regard means to see, to look at, to observe it, to consider it, to look intently at it, to gaze at it. In other words, to esteem it. You may have seen people sign emails before where at the end of their email, instead of saying, take care or blessings, they'll say regards. It's kind of a business type of salutation. Hey, regards. And they'll put their name. That means courtesy to you, esteem to you. That's what that means. You know what? When we regard iniquity in our hearts, the Lord will not hear us. Why? Because if we were repentant, we wouldn't be regarding that iniquity. If we were repentant and we had that broken and contrite heart, because remember, Psalm chapter 51 says, the sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite heart. But friend, if you are purposely choosing to sin, if you are willfully choosing to fornicate, to have outbursts of wrath, to be greedy, to be lustful, to be prideful, to be insert any sin here, then friend, we have not truly made Jesus the Lord of our life. Because being Lord means that he has become the boss of us. We have willfully decided to submit to him. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Check us out on the blog from hispresence.com and overnotunder.com. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.